His name is wonderful. And with that phrase, I welcome you all to our divine service. Our wonderful church extends a, a warm welcome to all those who are here for the first time and also to those who are coming here often or regularly. We would like to also request or let you know that you are safe to provide your information with us because our motto is not to exploit you but to serve you, to serve you in God's grace. And for that please visit our website hopesite.org for more information and to stay tuned to all of our events and programs. Uh, we like to welcome back, welcome back uh, Jaya Manti. She she was in Oregon. She was in Oregon, and she spent as was spending time with her daughter. So we we are glad to see her again. And also she'll be staying, she'll be attending the, the, the attending with us today and the next week. So we pray that let this day be a wonderful one. And we also like to welcome Pramila Auntie as she is watching us online. Happy Sabbath Auntie. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Akka. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Auntie. And thank you for joining us in, uh, in spirit. <laughs> so, with that said, are there, and also, the third week of any month is focused on faith matters. The quote for this week's theme is, We are twice armed if we fight with faith. I like to read again. We are twice armed if we fight with faith. Amen. And this was quoted by the person that we least, we least thought of. I'll just give you a hint. He's, a, he's one of the, what do you say, the Greek philosophers. Plato? Plato. Of course, you saw the bulletin board. <laughs> no, I didn't even say it. Okay. We take your word for it. <laughs> yes, it's Plato. Of course, he's a philosopher and sometimes he can be a bit of an atheist, but for him to make a statement, it means that he might have at least, might have Encounter. experienced, that's the right word, he may have experienced something during, at some point in his life, about, you know, his experience with God, and that what made him inspired, that's what inspired him to say this quote, we are twice armed, if you fight with faith. Which reminds us that you cannot fight this battle alone, you need God. Mm -hmm. The day we think that we can do things without God is the day we are lost. Mm -hmm. You and God are majority. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Prophecy Life is every Saturday at 3 p.m. And check prophecylife.org for more details. Mr. Robert, our host for this program will be on break till he is able to resume. Therefore, no new episodes will be posted. With that said, please remember Mr. Robert as he is still recovering. And the Women's Bible Study is always every Saturday at 4 p.m. led by Dr. Sonia Selvan. If there are no Bible studies, we will let you know in advance. Prayer fasting is every Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And after the divine service, all are welcome to lunch up. Even those who are watching us, even you can join us for lunch. You can drive and come in. Our whole, the house is open to all. <laughs> With that said, is there any other announcements to make? If not, let us all stand up and sing our opening song, Watch Your Saints. Watch your saints with eyelids waking. Lo, the powers of heaven and earth are shaking. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning, ready for your Lord's returning.
as Christians of this era, we have been told by the previous generation to keep, to stay awake. So, let us keep remembering that as we sing this song. Any other prayer requests? Yeah, pray for uh, 
uh, the host for Prophecy Live uh, for him to get better. He went through a heart surgery, so mm -hmm. it'll take time to recover. He wishes to resume, but you know he's not strong enough. To. Yes, so, Robert. His name is Robert Wesley mm -hmm. Joseph. Mr. Robert, Mr. Robert. So Joseph. please remember. And of course, uh, the, the great work in Pakistan. And uh, we have to pray that uh, you know God will bless and prosper because the people that uh, have been brought to the faith, uh, the Catholic pastor, uh, is working with an Adventist uh, pastor or con uh, conference over there. So, uh, and another person came to the faith. Uh, I don't know if I told you last week, but uh, within half an hour of uh, WhatsApp uh, teaching on the Sabbath, you know, the young person, if you. Uh, or online, Facebook, whatever, I think I posted. So pray that uh, that work. He has accepted. He, he and his uh, uh, siblings um, conduct uh, and run a church, a large church. He's a great singer. His uh, sister is a great singer. I posted it on YouTube, you can see, you know. So let's continue to pray for this young group that has come and, uh, uh, and of course for the general work and for our building project as well. Okay. okay. We pray for Mr. Robert. As much as you are also passionate, it's also important that you need to rest and take care of yourself. Even that too is, is a form of ministry for yourself. You know? We do ministry to others. It's also important that you do ministry to yourself. And sometimes taking care of yourself is also important. So let's request, uh, um, let's request, let's pray that Mr. Robert will take care of himself. And also we remember Amodanti's usual request for her three daughters and for her family. We also pray for Dr. Sonia and her family, and we pray for our church building project and the future of this church. Even if we may not have a church, but still, hope side still has a future. So, where that where does the future lead us to? We are not just, we are not so sure, but we know that God will uh, lead us where He wants this, where He wants to lead His church. To. Uh, any other prayer request? We also thank the aunties here. Pray for my health, that I have back pain. So. Okay, we'll pray for <laughs> my mom's back pain. <laughs> Anything else? Unspoken request also, along with my Unspoken. <laughs> okay, unspoken request. Anything else? Then in that case, uh, I request you all to bow down wherever it's possible and seek the Lord of Prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to thee humbly into thy presence. We thank you for your grace and mercy and everything you've given to us. We thank you that we are able to gather here in peace to praise and worship you. There are so many people out there who don't have this pleasure of gathering in a place without any problems. Father in heaven, even though we have problems, but yet we know that you're there for us. We thank you so much for that assurance. With that thought in mind, we come to thee and sub humbly submit all of our praise report and our prayer request. We pray especially for my cousin sister Deepa as she requested that we pray for her. Father in heaven, we are not so sure what exactly is the problem or if she is just asking for us to pray for her family in general. But either ways, we, we ask the Father, Father that you bless this family and that you will hear every prayer that they offer to you. We pray for her son, her husband, her mother, her brother and all other relatives. Bless them, Father, and, let, and keep their family safe. We pray for 
my mother as she is experiencing a pain in the back. Father, we ask you that you give her the strength that she needs so that she can take care of herself as well as to have a, a speedy recovery, Lord. We pray for Mr. Robert as he is still recovering. Father in heaven, may you give him the peace of mind so that he knows that he will recover soon and that he will be able to resume his work. Be with his family members and all his well-wishers and his caretakers who are tending to him. We pray that they will all do their part in helping him recover. We also <clears throat> thank you, Father. We, we also pray for Amudanti as she has an unspoken request. Whatever that, whatever that may be, we ask you that you will answer her prayer. We continue to pray for Dr. Sonia and her family. We also continue to pray for Amudanti and her daughters. We pray for the church building projects further uh, and also the future of this church. What right now the future may seem bleak as so many things are happening around us, but we pray that Hope Side will continue to give hope to all the people in the future who may come in a who may come to meet us. We pray for so many other things that we are not so sure of. We we don't know. Father, we ask that you answer them. We also pray for Mary Auntie as she is with the bereaved family as the woman has lost her husband. Father in heaven, losing a loved one is can be very painful. It can be very, it is heart shattering and it can really change your perspective of life. But Father, all in all when there is dark, when we are in darkness, when everything seems so dark, you are the light in that darkness. Let Mary Auntie and her ministry direct the woman, the widow who lost her husband, to the light so that she may find comfort in you and know that she will one day be reunited with her husband. Until then, you are there to take care of her and her family and all her personal affairs. Father, uh, be with the speaker of the hour as he is going to break the bread of life. May we pray that you will fill him with the Holy Spirit and be with those who are watching us online. We also pray that they too will experience the peace and the blessing of the sermon. And be with us through the rest of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again. To all of us seated here and to the people who are following us online, we uh, once again we commit this day into the keeping of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we come into His presence with our thank offering and with our tithes. Remember, when we give it to the Lord, the Lord will will uh, uh, will bless us as Malachi. The book of Malachi says, your measure will be pressed down, mm -hmm. overflowing, your hands will not be enough to fill. I will open the windows of heaven for you. Mm -hmm. So the promise is sure. Let's not give because God will give us back. Let's give God because we love Him. Amen. Amen. Because when, it is, when, when we experience the love, we will give more than what we have in our hearts. Mm -hmm. So let us love God, begin to love God if we have not. We, many times I also have a formal way of, uh, uh, you know, oh, okay, I, 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 I know God. But sometimes, it's a, sometimes I feel that emptiness in me. I say, I have not, uh, you know, experienced the love of God. Mm -hmm. You see, that, that when you experience and, uh, and uh, you know, and you, uh, and you want to, be, uh, to live for that, you will give more because you will exp that experience teaches you to give more than. Because yesterday my son was uh, asking me, 
uh, how is that, Mama, that uh, uh, people have so much money and yet they are humble? Mm -hmm. And they cannot, uh, they have no, he has uh, so much money and yet they are not happy. <laughs> That's what he told me. Yes, I say, so one example is uh, the recent man who died, Mr. Ratan Tata. He passed away at 86, Mr. Ratan Tata, Mr. and he was unmarried. But then, Mr. Ratan Tata, he gave 60% of all his uh, valuables that he earned, he's an entrepreneur, to the upliftment of the society, of the community. These were the people at the, uh, at the beginning of the, uh, India's independence, the Tatas and the Birlas, who were only able to, were the only uh, people who, were, who could afford a decent life at that time. So these were the people who initiated to become uh, the, the, the difference makers in the community. He has made a difference that even today we have Tata salt in our kitchen. That is the difference that he has made, and the most humble man. And I was watching his funeral. He's uh, he's so humble that uh, he, uh, that he was so friendly to say that uh, even a man who did not have legs and he had wheels to push, you know, these people on the road when they walk, he came to visit his dead body. He was the one who wept and cried uh, at the at his uh, coffin. They said that he was a man who gave me business. He lifted up my hand and said, I will make you uh, a better person. You gave, you gave him life. So he was born and everybody gave away. I was, uh, I was astonished how Mr. Tata could make such a big difference. And yet, so humble in heart. Very simple-minded, very simple in thought. But he had a great vision for India. So let that be that, um, what do you say? The working for the community. Let's drive, give our mission to, to the working of the community as Jesus did. Jesus did much more than that. So let's walk and live like Jesus and give like Jesus. Jesus always gave and gave and gave. He never took anything from anybody. But today he's asking our devotion to him. That's all he's asking for. Nothing more than that. So let us give our devotion, a heart, mind and soul and spirit to, to the Lord. Let's collect earth. Let's pray for the offering. Gracious Almighty Father, Lord, I come into your presence with thanksgiving in my heart and we as a family here also come to your presence, oh Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart to thank you for all the manifold blessings that you have given us through the week. And now we come with gratitude in our hearts, with our offerings that is before us. Lord, we pray that this offering will be blessed and give us the mind to serve people, Lord, not to serve ourselves, but to serve others. Let others be first in our heart, in our lives, so that your mission of the Sabbath will be spread like a seed, like a seedling in the, in the, in the ground. Lord, let it um, produce 30, 60, and 100 fruits, O oh Lord. Mighty God, I pray that your presence will be with each one of us bow down here. In Jesus' holy and righteous name I pray. Amen. Amen. Leviticus 16, 3 to 5. We'll read alternatively. That shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He, he shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with their linen girdle. And with a linen mitre shall he be our guide. 
These are the holy garments, therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. And ye shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Please be seated. Let us sing our theme song, Now Dear Lord, before the speaker of the hour plays a bit of flesh. Blessed and honored to be our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath to one and all. God is so gracious. And uh, I can't just imagine that we are in the third week of this month. Mm -hmm. October is just passing through, and uh, uh, I don't know how the days are, you know, flying through. And uh, God is so gracious that each one of us have got an opportunity to listen to God's word week after week. And I believe the presence of the Lord will be there with us as we meditate upon His Word. Our third week of the month is always uh, focused on faith matters. And uh, how much is of faith is really a faith? Have we ever thought about it? What amount of faith that we really do possess, uh, especially when things are down? when uh, things are not the way, how it is going the way, how we wanted it to. Uh, that's the time where your faith and my faith will be tested. And I believe that each one of us will have a measure of faith in these last days. Uh, the Lord who has instilled that faith in each one of us will be able to continue. Let's cling on 
And I know that the Lord in His own infinite mercy will be able to make sure that He who has been able to help us to start the race will enable each one of us to finish the race. And the topic that I've chosen today is called the day called good. The day called good. Uh, which day is good do you think so in a week? All days. All days. Okay, are there any bad days in a week? <laughs> all days are bad. Days. Uh -huh. All days are bad, all days are good. All days are good, okay, <laughs> depending on our situations where we are, yes. right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's the way how we are. But today, I want to take each one of our minds to the book of Leviticus chapter 16. Leviticus chapter 16 focuses on what the Hebrews call, is called as the day of atonement. In Hebrew, Yom Kippur. it is called as Yom Kippur. Recently they concluded, right? Yom Kippur. There was a blast on the same day where the Jewish holy day was been able to kill. And Ellen Mai says it so beautifully that the other name for Yom Kippur is not only the day of atonement, but it is called as the anti-typical day of atonement. In the Jewish calendar, there are seven major feast you call it as you know four comes up in the spring and three in the fall the fall feast begins with the feast of trumpets we all know that right okay feast of trumpets which is called as rosh ashnana rosh ashnana which means the feast of the trumpets okay it begins i said four in the spring and three in the fall. It starts with the Feast of the Trumpet, which is called Rose, Hush, and Now. The Feast of Trumpet inaugurates the ten days of awe. Never forget this one. Ten days of awe. With the blowing of the trumpet, in Hebrew language, the trumpet is known as the Shofar. S H O F A R. It begins with a R. The, Hebrew would, uh, the Hebrews would begin every year with repentance, with fasting, and soul searching. Once that trumpet has been sound from that day to the 10 days before getting into the day of atonement or the anti-typical day of atonement or Yom Kippur. Before getting into that, we have 10 days from the day of blowing of the trumpet. And the 10 days is been designated for number one, repentance, number two, soul searching, and number three, it is given to fasting. And this 10 days period from the time where the shofar has been blown, the 10 days period links to the day of atonement, which means it is the time of deep sorrow over sin and a plea for God to renew and restore the community. You know, Brother uh, uh, Justin was talking about the uncertainty about the future, right? It might be either individually, either it might be, you know, as a family, either it might be as a church. Uncertainty lies before, okay? And we are asking that in this 10 days period from the blowing of the trumpet to the day of atonement of what the Jewish people today call as Yom Kippur. This Yom Kippur is fascinating, okay, day full of rituals and reverence. It was rightfully been called the Good Friday of the Old Testament. You see? And, uh, and of course, we read for the, uh, what you call, the scripture of Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 3 and 5. How many of you go through the book of Leviticus once in a while? You know, sometimes you might not be able to understand, but just with prayer, just go read it, and I'm telling you, it will make an impact on your life and my life. So, and this is how Haran is to enter the sanctuary area with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He is to put on the sacred linen tunic, 
with linen undergarments next to his body. And he is to tie the linen sash around him and put on the linen turban. These are sacred garments. So he must bathe himself with water before he puts on them. If we have to go to the ritualistic way of how Aaron had to be prepared, it is so fascinating. You see, in a picture, nearly 200,000 people gathering together. They have just finished the 10 days of weeping, fasting and praying so that they can come before God to be cleansed and have their sins been removed. And Aaron, the high priest at the same time, is charged with an awesome responsibility of going into the presence of God on their behalf. Never forget, when we talk about Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, we have the high priest starting from Aaron. If you have to go to the book of Leviticus chapter 16, you see the high priest at that time is charged with awesome responsibility of going into the presence of God on somebody else's behalf. I was just talking to Brother Justin. I know how many of us really want to be a pastor? You know, when the question was asked, you know, I was very much reluctant. It is not so easy to lead a church or anything. Because of one reason, because as a pastor we have a responsibility. Just like Aaron had a responsibility, we have a responsibility. Every mind which comes and listens to God's word, and every mind which is waiting after the ten days uh, as ended is uh, as Aaron is entered into the most holy place once a year. It was a responsibility going into the presence of God on their behalf was not an easy task. You know, God had given specific instruction of how the high priest was to dress and how it was said that the priest in his, his sacred car could make one amazed and astonished beyond words. Uh, there are something uh, otherworldly about the whole affair. You know, after washing the body and putting on this holy car, when the priest is ready to begin, uh, he first sacrifices a bull, number one, knowing that he himself is sinful. And then the high priest has to first do something to get clean before God. He takes a bull and applies the blood to the altar so his own sins can be forgiven. Only then he can offer a sacrifice for others. He enters the Holy of Holies with hot coals in one hand and incense in another. He would drop the coal on the ground and pour the incense over them, creating a sweet fog of fragrance. He would then sprinkle the blood of the bull on the altar or on the mercy seat. After the had atoned for himself and his family, he would offer the sacrifice for the sins of the community. And that's the procedure which we can be able to find in Leviticus chapter 16. From the Israel community, he has to take the two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for the burnt offering. That's what we read in uh, Leviticus chapter 16. You can go through in verse 5 and 10. Uh, an important aspect is this. Aaron is to offer the bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for himself and his household. Then he has to take two goats uh, and present them before the Lord uh, at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Uh, and he is to cast lots for the two goats and one lot for the Lord uh, and the other for the scapegoat. We all know that, right? Two goats, lots has to be cast. Aaron shall bring the goat whose lot falls unto the Lord and sacrifice it for the sin offering. But the goat chosen by Lord as the scapegoat shall be present and alive before the Lord to be used for making atonement by sending it into the desert as a scapegoat. That's what we find in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 5 to 10. Imagine the scene there, okay? 200,000 people standing. When these rituals are taking place, hundreds and thousands of worshippers have gathered to be reminded of God's grace and mercy on the day of Yom Kippur. Then is what did they do? Weeping, soul searching, and making sure that. Not even an iota of sin has been able to be stained before the anti-typical day of atonement. This feast was 
was a very important thing because it only needed God's grace to save them. An important aspect, if you have to go to the book of Leviticus, uh, you know, in case if there is an iota of sin in a person who is standing as a worshiper, looking for God's mercy, and if the mercy has been not shown by God, he is supposed to be an outcast, never to enter into the Israel force at any cost. Which means it simply says that, God can never make that person to be his child or his child loses their opportunity to call God as his father. And that is the seriousness of the day of our home. And everybody with weeping with a rendered hearts, they'll be waiting for the outcome. You see, when Aaron has finished making an atonement for the most holy, the most holy place, the tent of meeting and the altar, and he shall bring forward the light coat, and he is to lay both hands on the head of the light coat and confess over it to the wickedness and the rebellion of the Israelites, and all their sins, uh, put them on the coat's head, and he shall send the coat away, and all their sins to a solitary place, uh, and the man shall release it in the desert. That's what we read in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 20 to 22. And these are the proceedings, uh, okay, that we all have been aware of. You know, this goal which escapes, is called as a scapegoat, right? You know, what's a scapegoat mean? It is led outside the camp by the Gentile, not a Jew. Never forget who had no connection with the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Who will take this God? Not a Jew. Who? A Gentile. a Gentile. Nothing to do with Israel. The Hebrew word for the scapegoat is called Ozazel. O-Z-Z-A-Z-E-L. -Z -Z the word carries out with an idea of being banished or taken away. So the scapegoat is also sailed, which means it is removed from their sight. All of the collective sins were placed on the head of the code and then disappears into the desert outside the city. In the time of Christ, the code would be led into a high rock about 12 miles from Jerusalem where it would be pushed over the edge and killed. <laughs> you know, a very interesting tradition went along with this event, you know. A red cloth was tied to the horns of the goat, if you have to know. Don't ever forget. Okay, listen to this one. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, but, you know, red cloth uh, was tied into the horns of the goat to represent the sin of people. Okay, which simply says that, you know, all the sins which most popularly the Satan allowed you to sin and things like that, okay, will be on the head of one. And then what happened? A red cloth was also tied to the gate of the temple. Have you heard about it? It will be tied to the two horns of the court, which will be taken by a Gentile outside. And the red ribbon like will be tied where? On the temple? Dopos. Okay. And then, if during the coming year, if the cloth turned white, then the people could be assured of forgiveness. That makes sense? I like the statement which is recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18. What does the Bible say? Though your sins, your sins are, are like scarlet, scarlet will be white. you see the context of the book of Leviticus, chapter 16? Why those were made? You know, Jewish writers, okay, tells us the 40 years before the temples was destroyed in AD 70, okay, the red cord suddenly stopped turning white. This means something extraordinary must have happened around 30, which could have been. If we have to go to the book of John chapter 19, Jesus is brought before the man named, okay, do you remember? You know, Pilate. You know, the question for you and me, is Pilate a Jew or a Gentile? Gentile. Was a Jew or a Gentile? He was a Gentile, right? Never forget this one. 
He was a Gentile. You know, Pilate is a Gentile. You know, the high priest and the teachers of the Lord demanded that Jesus be killed and a priest killed upon his head. You know, Jesus is beaten. A crown of thorns are placed on his head. The ring of crimson blood circle his head. You know, Pilate mocking the Jews presents Jesus and say, here is your king. We all know the statement. Never forget. Now, do not look at your Bibles. What is the next thing that the crowd says? What does the crowd say? You see, you take Jesus there. After Pilate giving Jesus, okay, say he is your king. What did the Pilate, what did the crowd say? What did the crowd say? You know, there was an opportunity, you know, somehow that Jesus would have gone on the day of Passover that a person could be released there in freedom. But what did the people say? They simply said, crucify him, right? Take him away. And that is what they shout. And so Jesus is taken outside the camp by Gentiles with a crowd shouting, Ozazel. I wonder if the good Jewish guys in the crowd, that once they knew their Torah, the ones that had seen the Ozazel go taken outside the city year after year, did they see the striking symbolism? Did they get it? Was this ultimate final young Kippur during the time where Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, where a Gentile is been able to take Jesus outside? You know. If you have to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. You've been wondering, you know, is he going to have a stand to the whole teaching? You know, one of the things that the high priest was never allowed to do was to sit down. You know why? The high priest was never allowed to sit down at all. You know why? His work was never done. You know, once the day of atonement happens, there is always the next year, right? Why? The people keep sinning. So the pattern was developed. The feast of trumpets followed by the ten days of mourning for sin, followed by the day of atonement year after year and went on. Can you understand the deep longing with the Jewish psyche for a once and for all sacrifice wouldn't be that good news? You see, even Jesus never accepted Jesus to be their personal savior, Messiah. Why do you want to continue? Why? The simple phenomena, because this is this institution has to go on and on and on and on and on. So that's one of the reason they don't accept that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary once for all. No. For a Jewish mind to understand that concept is absolutely very, 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 very difficult. You see? In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says the, old, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never but the same sacrifice repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could, would they have not stopped offer being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty of their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sin because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and the goats to take away sins. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 to 4. The day of atonement was a shadow and a symbol of a time that sins would be taken away and the people would be cleansed once and for all. But the reality was coming. What is the reality? You know that if you have to go to the book of Hebrews you will be able to understand that Jesus replaced Yom Kippur. Jesus replaced as the high priest for Aaron. Jesus, once for all, gave an opportunity that you and I, year after year, day after day, week after week, month after month, even though we have committing sins in one way or the other, Either it might be in a word, either it might be an action, and we have Jesus, not only a high priest, but he is a brother. He is the one who is the high priest standing in front of his father, being able to impart the grace and mercy for you and me. And that is the day 
will God call good? The Bible says it absolutely very clearly in Isaiah 52 verse 5 and 6. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all, it says. And Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 23 and 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds. That you have been what? Healed. We're talking about uh, the day called good. Because of only one reason. The Lord put an end to all the sacrifice. No priest can be able to atone for any sins that you and I have been committed. But thank God for the mercy and the praise of God on the day of judgment. I like Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. What does the Bible say? Fear God and give glory to Him because the hour of judgment has come. So the day of judgment was supposed to be the day called good. Why? Because that is the day where your sins might be as common, but I will make you as what? White as snow. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be a sin for you and me, so that in him we might become what? Righteousness unto God. There's a message for you and me, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We are living in this war-torn world. We are living in this chaotic world. When the whole world is becoming so Babylonish and being so chaotic in every angle of life. But God has placed judgment, a day of judgment. A day of judgment is a day which is absolutely good provided when the day of trumpet is been shown, when the three angels message has been opened from that day to the second coming of Christ. The only thing that we have to do is what? Repent reconcile and give ourselves to Christ because uh, nothing good today but there is a day called as good which is coming a day of judgment you see listen to me saints of God God knows he knows about abortions he knows about the lusts he knows about the breakups. He knows about he is not mad at you. He is mad about you. No, God wants to give you freedom. The goat has left the building. You know, God is in the freedom business. And Jesus, the ultimate scapegoat, took your sin and nailed it to the cross so we could be able to live freely. You know, John quoted Jesus as saying, if the Son has set you free, you are free. What? Indeed. John chapter 8 verse 36. And Paul adamantly writes in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to No condemnation. When will the day be good? When there is no what? Condemnation. That means Christ is not accusing you or shaming you. The goat has left the building. The goat has left the building. The goat has left the building. We are not only need to hear that individually, but as the community as well. The church is a place where constantly reminds each one of us that the Lord in his, he is in his holy temple. He wants to impart that mercy and grace. The day of judgment, Yom Kippur, the day where God is waiting to free you and me. The day where he wants to give us an opportunity to taste and see that the Lord is good is sweeter than honey. As a high priest heads in his chair, you know, what does God speak? He simply speaks one beautiful thing. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud. Your sins like a morning mist return to me. 
for I have redeemed you. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 22. It simply says a beautiful thing. You want the day is back today. You know that the day is not going the way how it is supposed to be. But there is a day which is designated. And the Lord is calling for you and me. And he says return to me. For I have what? Redeemed you. Isaiah chapter 38 verse 17. The Bible says it absolutely very clearly. In your love you kept me from the of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. Micah chapter 7 verse 19. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurt all our iniquities into the depths of the sea, he says. And the Lord absolutely is so compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will really he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as the high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgression from each one of us, Psalms 103, was 8 to 12. We call this day good because what our good God did for each one of us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's calling for you and me. We are living in this very last days of time. What does Leviticus chapter 16 teach us? It simply teaches for you and me that our love, our God is a loving God. Love is a caring God. He's ever ready to redeem, redeem each one of us to be a part of Him. And that's what the reason Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 and 7 says, the everlasting gospel, the good news is given to each, each one of us. The day of judgment is not to accuse us, but the day of judgment is calling for you and me to run back to Jesus Christ so that every bad which has happened in our life will turn out to be good. I want to urge each one of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the day of salvation. Don't procrastinate tomorrow for tomorrow. If you and I have been able to hear God's word, the Bible says do not harden your heart. Things are not going the way how it is. Everything is upside down. Everything is bad. But don't ever forget, there is a good God on behalf of you and me. He's still there as a high priest, as a brother, as a friend. He's still making an atonement for you and me. And I like that beautiful thought from John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. For whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. The day called good is on the way. Let us be ready. Return to him. And be blessed and be a blessing. And may his name be glorified and magnified. And that's what my prayer is all about for each one of us this Sabbath afternoon. God bless each one. Pastor, for that wonderful message. In response to the sermon, shall we all stand and sing our closing song, Sweet Bye Bye. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. How can we see this land? Mm -hmm. It is by faith, mm -hmm. not by sight. Mm -hmm. Like Abraham. Mm -hmm. And that day will be good, if you could pray. 
from Leviticus chapter 16 give us, giving us hope we want to thank you for your mercy and grace bestowed upon each one of us we don't deserve oh father give us an opportunity to return unto you give us an opportunity oh father that we could be able to spend our time by rending our hearts to you we want you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness we want the ribbon of our heart red oh father to be cleansed as white as snow. Oh Lord, we look forward for that beautiful miracle that you been able to do that, oh Father, to the Jewish community. Okay, it started most probably 2,000 years ago. Give us an opportunity, oh Father, that we could experience that peace, the joy, that happiness, knowing that our sins have been forgiven. Looking forward for the day, oh Father, where the day will be good. The day will be when the sun appears in the clouds of heaven. Give us all an opportunity to behold you face to face. Giving an opportunity, O oh Father, that we all could go home with you, to live with you forever. We are looking forward for the day, O oh Father, with a little glimpse of hope and faith. Help our unbelief as we surrender ourselves to you. By cleansing us from all unrighteousness by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. As we look forward and hasten your coming. Thank you for being with us and answering our prayer. Till we meet again, may your presence go with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for, for being a part of our service today. I, I hope that all of you have enjoyed today's service. Thank you, Pastor, for that message. The day called good. That is, we repent. That day will be a day of reunion and gladness. Mm -hmm. And as we sang the song, sweet by and by, we can see that land only by faith. So faith, let us prepare ourselves by faith. You can't do this, you can't repent alone, let us repent in faith. Mm -hmm. So with that said, we are come to the end of our service today. <coughs> If you have any prayer requests or 
if you want someone to pray, if you want someone to pray with, or you want Bible study, or house visitation, or any kind of service, please do not hesitate to reach out to us through our website, and we will gladly help you to the best of what we can. With that said, hope you all stay safe, and see you all next week. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.